Members of the Senate and guests will please rise as we receive our distinguished president. The Senate will please come to order. Members and guests will remain standing while we're led in our devotion by the chaplain, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Chaplain. We read in the book of Proverbs, wisdom is a fountain of life to one who has it, but folly is the punishment of fools. From Proverbs chapter 16, verse 22. Join me as we pray. Most blessed God, we lift up to you today all in South Carolina who are involved in every aspect of education, all who are dedicated to bringing the gifts of wisdom and knowledge to every one of our children and even to many adults. This Senate has always been determined to place a high value upon assuring that our citizens have the very best tools conceivable and the most dedicated teachers possible in order for learners to succeed here in the 21st century. Therefore, O oh God, unfailingly guide this body as these senators and their aides continue to do all that is necessary to be certain that education will always thrive here in South Carolina. In your holy name we pray, Lord. Amen. I pledge allegiance. Are there any petitions, memorials, presentments of grand jury, or such like papers? No we have no communications. Therefore, we're on the introduction of new bills and resolutions. The Senator from Sumter, what purpose do you rise? Unanimous consent request. State your request. Mr. President, I would ask that on the next available date that the Senate adjourn in memory of Judge Reuben Gray. Um, we got some very sad news in Sumter. Judge Gray was a long-time long -time law partner of our former um, Chief Justice Ernest Finney, um, served on the family court bench for years and is a beloved member of our community. And, and we were sad to learn that he passed away yesterday and just want to express our condolences to his family. Without objection on the next available day, so ordered. Senator from Orangeburg, Senator Hutto, what purpose do you rise? At request. State your request. On the next available day that we adjourn in memory of Virginia DeWitt Zemp. Uh, she was a sister, um, I mean, Virginia, uh, yeah, Virginia DeWitt Zemp, who was a sister of DeWitt Zemp. Uh, she was the head of historic Camden Foundation and uh, a, a wonderful lady, was working hard toward the 250th anniversary of the revolution and passed away just recently. So ordered. Thank you. Condolences are with them. We're on. I have the reading clerk to read new res resolutions, new bills and resolutions. Introduction of a bill by Senator Sheely. It amends a code relating to the terms defined in the Children's Code to define torture, to include torture in the definition of child abuse or neglect and amending further sections relating to the right to forego reasonable efforts towards reunification and grounds for termination of parental rights. Family and Veterans Committee. Introduction of concurrent resolution by Senator Sheely. It requests Department of Transportation 
named US-1 between I-20 and the town of Lexington and Lexington County, South Carolina Highway Patrol Trooper First Class Robert P. Perry Jr. Memorial Highway and direct appropriate signs and markers. Transportation Committee. Senate resolution by Senator Sheely is to recognize February 2022 as American Heart Month in South Carolina. Senator from Lexington, Senator Sheely, what purpose do you rise? Motion to go with it. Could you read the next? Bill? To, to recognize February 2022 as American Heart Month. Mr. President, I have a unanimous consent request. State your request. I have, um, I ask that unanimous consent for the resolution. Is, is this American Heart? It is. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. On American Heart Month um, that was just read across the desk to go without reference and be placed on the calendar. Is there objection? Without objection, so ordered. I would also like for it to go, excuse me, unanimous consent for it to go without reference. Without reference. It will be placed on the. I'm, I'm trying to, I had two and I was going to do them all at one time. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Okay. Reading clerk will continue to read. Further Senate resolution from Senator Sheely to recognize February 18th, 2022 as National Caregivers Day in South Carolina. Senator from Lexington, Senator Sheila, what purpose do you rise? Um, Mr. President, I have a unanimous consent request. State your request. Um, I request that the resolution on National Caregivers Day that was just read across the desk go without reference and be placed on the calendar. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. The reading clerk will continue to read. Introduction of House Bill 4504. This is a bill which amends the code relating to the maximum sales tax. So it's surprised that a watercraft trailer and a watercraft motor may not be taxed more than the maximum tax. Finance Committee. The Agriculture and Natural Resources Committee has reported favorable on S-1010, a bill by Senator Gamble and others, adds a section to the code to provide that an entity that is contracted for the right to store watercraft in a reservoir owned by the U.S. Corps of Engineers has exclusive rights to any return flows generated to that reservoir. Placed on the calendar. Agriculture and Natural Resources Committee reported favorable on S-961. It's a bill by Senator Sen and Campson and others. It's relating to definitions of honey to provide that beekeepers producing no more than 400 gallons of honey may file for an exemption from inspections and regulations requiring honey to be processed, extracted, and packaged in an expected food processing establishment. Placed on the calendar. Introduction of H4872, it's a concurrent resolution to recognize and commend South Carolina's FFA members, formerly known as Future Farmers of America, and all who support, promote, and encourage these outstanding students of agricultural education, and join them in observance of National FFA Week, February 19th through the 26th, 2022. Placed on the calendar. The desk is clear. Are there any requests for local bills? Any requests for local bills? Senator from Lexington, Senator Sheely, what purpose do you rise? Mr. President, I have a unanimous consent request. State your request. I ask unanimous consent that we recall S-951 from the Family and Veteran Services Committee and ask that it be placed on the calendar. S-951 is the annual resolution that recognizes March 12th as Girl Scout Day. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the bill is recalled and will be placed on the calendar. Senator from Lexington. Unanimous consent request. State your request, Senator from Lexington. Um, Mr. President, I uh, ask that um, 
permission to pass out materials to the body? Without objection. Mr. President, I also Senator have another Mr. unanimous consent request. I figure I'd get it all done at one time. I understand. Yes, um, ma'am. I'd like to make a brief announcement. You're recognized. Uh, Mr. President, next Wednesday on February the 16th from 6 to 8 p.m. in the Vista Room is my annual event for children. We all know my passion for children in South Carolina. And I have Katrina's Kids, which is um, a foundation for children in foster care and group homes. And all the money goes back to the children of South Carolina all over the state. As you know, we've been to um, uh, your county up in Oconee, and we've been to several other counties. We've been to Greenville and um, all over the state of South Carolina. And we'll be having our event at the Vista Room, and I'm going to pass out some information, and I hope everyone can join us. And bring your wallet. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that announcement. The body is so informed. Any request for local bills? Any senator from Charleston, Senator Sin, what purpose do you rise? Unanimous consent request. I'm sorry, St I was standing before you went on to the next. Oh, session. I'm sorry. That's fine. I'm sorry. Um, State your request. To make an, another announcement about. You're, you're recognized to, to make your announcement. Thank you. About the healthier state house screening. Right. I know most of y'all heard me yesterday. It's downstairs right now. I wanted you to know, I just went through. It took literally two minutes. They have it very well organized down there. And you'll also be offered a free um, echo carotid and abdominal aorta ultrasound if you want one. All you have to do is, is ask. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that announcement, and uh, appreciate appreciate the work that's being done with that screening. Any requests for local bills? Hearing none, that takes us to page six. S seven one seven third third reading statewide third reading bills. The first one is on page six. S-717, the clerk will read. It's a bill related to institutions and transactions exempt from the state's certification of need and health facilities licensure act to add diabetes screening facilities. Pending questions, third reading. Those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Bill gets the third reading. That takes us to page seven on the calendar, page seven, H3211. The clerk will read. Amendment on the desk. Senator from Greenville, Senator Corbin, what purpose do you rise, sir? Um, withdraw. Clerk will publish the amendment. The amendment is by Senators Malloy, Sheely, Hutto, and Young. Mends the bill as an if amended adds a new section to read. Section 63.1.150, subsection F of the code is repealed. Senator from Aiken, what purpose do you rise? Explanation. I'm going to provide an explanation. Recognize for explanation of the amendment. Right, so this is the, when this bill came up, I think it was last week, um, we had some discussion on the floor about amending it and eliminating the sunset clause so that there would no longer be a sunset on the Joint Citizens and Legislative Committee. So that's what this amendment does is it eliminates the sun, sunset clause. I move for passage of the amendment. Pending question is adoption of the amendment. Those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The amendment is adopted. There are no further amendments on H3211. Roll call is required. The clerk will ring the bell. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Adams. Not voting, Mr. Alexander. Aye. Aye. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Bennett. Aye. Mr. Campson. Aye. Mr. Cash. 
Not voting, Mr. Clammer. Aye. Mr. Corbin. Aye. Mr. Cromer. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mr. Fanning. Aye. Mr. Gambrell. Not voting, Mr. Garrett. Aye. Mr. Goldfinch. Aye. Mr. Grooms. Mr. Grooms not voting, Mrs. Gustafson. Aye. Mr. Harputlian. Aye. Mr. Hembry. Mr. Hembry not voting. Mr. Hembry votes aye, Mr. Hutto. Not voting, Mr. Jackson. Not voting, Mr. Kevin Johnson. Aye, Mr. Michael Johnson. Aye, Mr. Kimbrell. Aye, Mr. Kempson. Not voting, Mr. Loftus. Not voting, Mr. Malloy. Not voting, Mr. Martin. Aye, Mr. Massey. Aye, Mrs. Matthews. Not voting, Mr. Michael Veen. Not voting, Ms. McLeod. Not voting, Mr. Peeler. Mr. Peeler votes aye, Mr. Rankin. Not voting, Mr. Rice. Aye, Mr. Sab. Not voting, Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott not voting, Mrs. Sin. Mrs. Sin not voting, Mr. Setzler. Aye, Mrs. Sheely. Aye, Mr. Stevens. Aye, Mr. Talley. Aye, Mr. Turner. Aye, Mr. Verdon. Aye, Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams votes aye, Mr. Young. Aye. Have all members voted? Senator Michael Bean votes aye. Senator Cash votes aye. Senator Hutto votes aye. Senator Kimson votes aye. Senator Adams votes aye. Senator from McCormick, what purpose do you rise? Motion, please. Sir. State your request. I'd like to give Mike Gambrell leave for sickness for today. So ordered. Other members, Senator Sin votes aye. Senator Rankin votes aye. Any other members needing, wanting to vote? Senator Kimson, what purpose do you rise? Unanimous consent. State your request. For leave for the Senator of Richland. Senator McLeod. 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 Senator McLeod. So ordered. Have all members voted? The polls will close and the clerk will tabulate. <laughs> By a vote of 36 to 0, the bill is given approval in third reading. Senator from Spartanburg, Senator Martin, what purpose do you rise? While we're in between orders, I'd like to recognize the doctor of the day. You are so recognized to introduce the doctor of the day. Senator from Spartanburg. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the Senate, if I can have your attention, I'd like to introduce the doctor of the day, Dr. Greg Colbath. He's with us in the balcony. He's from Spartanburg. Um, he's the president of our association, of the Medical Association in Spartanburg. And he hosted an event for us um, the other night in Spartanburg where we were able to have a legislative panel of House members and senators to hear from them and listen to them and hopefully provide some insight to what's going on at, at the State House. And he's in sports medicine and ortho surgery. And I'm coming up to see you about my shoulder, sir. So let's give him a warm welcome. Appreciate your service. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor, for being here today. We appre appreciate it so much. Thank you, Senator from Spartanburg. That takes us to second, second reading bills, uncontested. The bottom of the page 16 is our first bill, S908 by the senators from Ori and the senator from Berkeley. The reading clerk, we have a committee amendment on the desk. The reading clerk will read. Transportation Committee proposes the following amendment. Mentions the bill on page 2, line 9, 
By adding a subitem 3, only offenses which, which occur within five years of each other, included in immediately preceding the, the date of the last offense, shall constitute prior offenses within the meaning of this section. Senator from Pickens, what purpose do you rise? To explain the bill. Are they amendment? I believe, have we not adopted the amendment? Not the committee amendment. No, no, okay. sir. The, can I, I, you may explain the bill first and then the amendment to go with that. Would that be helpful? That, you, you're recognized to make the explanation. All right, the bill is dealing with, the bill is dealing with the Carolina squat, which is the vehicles that you'll see riding down the road that are excessively high in the front and low in the rear. Uh, we heard a lot of testimony about the dangers of those vehicles, people running over pedestrians, so forth and so on. Uh, there's an amendment on that bill to have a look back period on the penalties for five years. That's the, the amendment. And it also allows a six month grace period going into the bill. That's what's up there before us. The, com the question is the adoption of the committee amendment. Senator from Spartanburg, Senator Talley, what purpose do you rise? Let's see if the Senator Pickens will yield for a question. I will yield. Senator Yields. Senator, you may have said this and I missed it. What if, if, if you have a vehicle that would be in violation of this law once passed, does it require during that six month period you just mentioned somebody to alter their vehicle? It would make it, it would, it would take, uh, it takes six months before the law goes into effect after signature of the governor. Then there's a six month grace period and after that 12 month period between the two of them, they can't drive that vehicle on the road if it exceeds four inches higher in the front than it is in the rear. So, so in essence, nobody is grandfathered in. Nobody's grandfathered gotcha. in. Gotcha, thank you. Mr. President. Senator from Greenville, Senator Corbin, what purpose do you rise? Uh, would the Senator yield for a question? Senator yield. Senator yields. Senator, um, the way I was reading this, it doesn't really, prohibits you from raising or lowering a vehicle. It simply is that you can't raise the front end more than four inches over the back end. Is that correct? The bill itself that deals with that. There's also another statute that is in code that prevents you from raising or lowering a vehicle in excess of six inches. And there's an amendment to clarify the fact that if that's a pickup truck, it doesn't apply to the pickup truck. That's was gonna be my next question. Are trucks exempt from this, pickup trucks? Trucks are not exempt from the what they call the Carolina squat. It would not be, there's an amendment ad addressing that coming up. Okay, thank you, Senator. Senator from Spartanburg, Senator Martin, what purpose do you rise? See if the Senator from Pickens would yield for a question. I will yield. Senator yields. Thank you, Senator. Um, is this a pure mechanical change that you're talking about, a mechanical modification? You're, I think what you're referring to is an aftermarket versus me loading a load of plywood in the back of my truck and going down the road. Is that kind well, of that, how that, you're... That was part A of my question, so we'll, we'll deal with that first. It's, it is a change in from the factory settings on a vehicle. So if you change, if you raise the front end more than four inches from what the factory settings are, that you would be in violation of this law. But if you did raise the, the factory set settings more than four inches in the front, you would have to do that a minimum of three in the rear, correct? Or one in the rear. Two. It's the four inch difference of what you do. The, the bill doesn't prevent anyone from raising or lowering a vehicle. It prevents the delta from the front to rear to be more than four inches, correct? That's what the bill does, that is correct. Okay, and then what your example for the plywood, let's say someone loaded up plywood, you know, on a, I wish this would have been in place when I was a child because my buddy's dad would get us to go cut firewood and he told us to quit loading the firewood when the, the tires touched the wheel wells. So that, it'd be nice if this would have been in place then, but what, if that happened, would they be in violation? They would not be in violation because of the load. Okay, it so we'd be have still been working. Strictly a modification. Um, so my next question is, it pure, purely mechanical change or there's a lot of people that fool with hydraulics, if it was a temporary change and they could return it to normal with hydraulics or airbags, does it apply to that? What is the four inch limit? Does that mean while it's in operation or while it's if seated? They, to try to answer your question, I had a question about that. If Sometimes you'll see at a car show or something, you may see a vehicle that's got airbags on it or hydraulic lifters. I don't know the details of how they do it. 
but they would be excessive on that. It would not apply to that, but if you're operating it on the street, it would apply. So, you, so it, that, that person would be prohibited for having their truck or car have those features and modifications as long as when they crank the engine and get on one of our state-owned highways that it had to be within that four-inch split. That is correct. Thank you, sir. Senator from Newberry, what purpose do you rise? See if the Senator will yield for a question. I will Senator yield for a question. Senator, I've had several complaints from people about uh, SUVs and I guess some pickup trucks too where they're jacked up so high that even if they got lights on low beam, you got high beam headlights glaring through your windshield. And also sometimes they got a little guy sitting behind the wheel that can't see over the front end of the pickup truck. Uh, will this correct most of that, we hope? It will help address that. The, we had testimony to the fact that if somebody was driving and had their vehicle altered in excess of the four inches that they had to have a passenger look out. Uh, like if they were making a right-hand turn, they'd have to have a passenger actually look out the window to see right. if there was somebody in the walk lane. You know, like if, if you come up to a light uh, and yours is green, the one opposing you is red, and somebody can be walking across that crosswalk, and if you're making that turn in a vehicle like this, you can't even see them. So that's can't, can't see them. Is that right? That's the Senator, reason. I believe uh, North Carolina passed something too. Did y'all look at the North Carolina this law? This is very similar to the North Carolina okay, law. Okay, thank you, S Senator from Berkeley. Senator Adams, what purpose do you rise? See if the senator has yield for a question or two. Well, Senator, yield for a question. Uh, senator, we yield. Senator, yield. Um, the. Uh, let me ask you this in regard how will an officer check the the so i'm understanding it's going to be measured from the ground from the center of the wheelbase to the top of the fender how is the officer going to check the factory fender wells because they're not going to be consistent the front fender to the back fender are different out of the factory how are they going to make sure that that's a, a difference of four inches? I, I think that's going to have to be an on-site observation in most cases, and I, I've looked at this a lot. Most, in most cases, the rear is actually more than the front, uh, and I've, I've, I've walked around parking lots looking at this. There are some cases that that would apply, and in that case, they would have to make an on-site observation that there is a variance in there, but they would be measuring front and rear fenders that are su supposedly similar so that could be that 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 so they could be different just from the factory settings. If they're different from the factory settings, they're going to have to take that into account. That's correct. So let me ask you this: So, are there not already laws in place for lights have to to admit in a certain distance and a certain direction for the headlights? The blinkers have to be visible. The tag has got to be displayed at a certain angle for officers. So officers already have the ability to stop these vehicles. Uh, if they have improper equipment on there or improperly displayed equipment, that it would be a true statement, yes. Okay. Thank you. Senator from Orangeburg, Senator Stevens, what purpose do you rise? The Senator yield for a question or two. Senator yield for a question, he does. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator, uh, have any conversation been uh, had with the insurance uh, association uh, about uh, these vehicles and the possible uh, uh, accident that may occur? I, I don't recall any testimony from the insurance companies on this. But obviously, Senator, what you're doing is, 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 a, good, is a good act. As, as, I can, as I drive around and, and I see uh, these individuals who, who for some reason wanted to, to do it do mostly to uh, Chevrolet Tahoes, and, and the, the vehicle is actually about eight feet off of the ground in the front, and I just don't see how the driver can actually see anything other than looking straight up. I don't think he can see anything uh, parallel to, to, the, to, the, to the road. So just wanted to say thank you for, for looking after my welfare <laughs> and the welfare of others because, I mean, it's scary. And, and Senator, you know, I, I went and I, I, I checked on these alters, alterations that have been made on these vehicles. You have to do some mechanical 
changes, mechanical changes, something that deviate from what the National Transportation Safety Administration have said is how this vehicle is to be uh, made and what should remain in place. There are different components, uh, aftermarket components that are being sold to actually alter these vehicles. And, and this thing is deeper than, 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 than what we think. And I'm just wanting to make sure that, that we look at every little avenue to make sure that these vehicles are safe and we get as many of them off the road as we possibly can and get them back down to earth. I agree with your observation. Thank you, sir. Depending. Senator from Spartanburg, Senator Martin, what purpose do you rise? See if the senator from Pickens would suffer some more questions. Will senator yield for additional I would be questions? Glad to yield and suffer for more questions. Yes. Well, I, and I, and senator from Spartanburg, so recognized. Okay, I'll, I'll hold. For senator, a minute. senator from Edgefield, what purpose do you rise? Mr. President, um, while the senator from Spartanburg is making the senator from Pickens suffer. I ask unanimous consent that we invite the House to ratify acts before they depart. Is there objection? Hearing none. So ordered. Thank you. Senator from Spartanburg is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President, and um, thank you for yielding, Senator from Pickens. I'm sorry, but the engineer in me is having a little trouble not asking these questions. So, a lot of times, as you know, I deal in auto racing and we have to go through technical inspection. And there's certain rules and requirements that we have to be and certain issues that you have to be a certain height or a certain delta between front and rear heights. And there's always ways to get past that. So I'm really, I'm really serious on trying to figure out how you truly because if we're going to put four inches in there, I'm assuming we're going to go, if, do you know what they're going to measure with? They're going to measure with a tape measure or a laser or calipers? Are you, are you familiar with that? Uh, I'm, obviously, there's several me methods of measuring. I would think that probably the most uh, efficient way that most people would have access to would be a tape measure. Right. So then, then you're going to be, most tape measures are going to be, we have some in racing that are 32nd, but most tape measures are going to be in a, the 16th is about what you can see on the line. So you have a, you've got to look at that and you could probably determine it maybe on the side of the road, somebody may only be able to determine it within an eighth of an inch. So I'm just really, I'm trying to, and again, I understand. I mean, I, let, let's get to the point. I'm not really, I'm not giving you a hard time. I hate seeing those things drive down the road. I mean, the lights and all that. So the issue is, the issue is the, the visual. The issue is, can, is seeing other pat motorists with the lights. I'm afraid that we're going to be too subjective here with the measurement or enforcement. So if, if someone goes out and they, and they measure it, and let's say one officer sees us three and seven eighths, one sees four and an eighth on the same vehicle, vehicles in violation in the eyes of one officer and not the other. I want, I want to see something done about this, but I also don't want to pass something so we say we did something and there's really no way to enforce it. You know, you're on the side of a dirt road at night, you're on the side of an, maybe some uneven pavement or a shoulder. So if you had a bumper modification from original, but the truck was modified from original, so you're measuring it to a bumper that would show a delta that would be different than normal if it was just a pure raise on the mechanical side. What, again, I, I'm really not wanting to slow, slow the bill down, but I, I'm wondering if you, would, if you would entertain carrying this over and let's work on an amendment that really deals with how this would be measured on the side of the road because as I deal with the law enforcement funding, I, I don't want to put a subjective tool in law enforcement's hand to go through the measurements because somebody's going to get the benefit of the doubt and call it three and seven eighths somebody's not going to get the benefit of the doubt and call it four and an eighth. And, and I hear what you're saying, and, and you're, you're kind of almost going into a NASCAR pre-race inspection type situation. <laughs> and I think we're, and, and I, you ask if we care to, I mean, I will if you want to, but I'd really like to move it forward because I don't think we're talking about a difference between four, four and a half, four and a quarter. I think we're talking about a four-inch thing. 
uh, you know, and we're saying this one may be up eight inches. I don't, I think if it's four and a half or five inches, it's a non-issue in law enforcement. And that's based on what DPS said. Okay. This well, is also, you, this is also a law that is very similar to what North Carolina passed and is working in North Carolina. Okay. I'll tell you what I, I wouldn't mind doing. I don't know if everybody else would, but I wouldn't mind. I don't want to have a roll call on this right now because I don't want to vote in favor of it and then have reservations. I don't want to vote against it and have reservations. I don't mind moving it forward on second reading, carrying over the roll call and amendments to third so we can have time to, to take a look at it. I mean, I'm not making that motion, obviously, because I don't have the floor, but um, so there's no motion to object to. But anyway, the I'm just bill. saying I, I really don't want to. Um, I really don't want to to do that right now. Okay. There's now objection. There is there is now objection to the bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, that now takes us to the bottom of page 17, S712, by the senator from Buford, the reading clerk. I'm sorry, Senator from Greenville, Senator Corbin. What purpose? Uh, move to carry over. Move to carry over. All in favor say aye. Opposed no, ayes have it. So ordered. Okay. Now it now takes us to page 18 on your calendar. Page 18 to the top of the calendar. S946 by the senator from Georgetown, the reading clerk. Desk. Okay. Committee amendment on the desk. Senator from Ori, Senator Henry, what purpose do you rise? We are working on a, on a very small technical amendment on this one. Um, move to carry that over until next Tuesday. Motion to carry over. Those in favor, aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. So ordered. The bill is carried over. That takes us to the middle of the page, to H3606. Have the Senator. Senator from Buford, Senator Davis, what purpose do you rise? Mr. President, I move to carry over that bill. Motion is to carry over H3606. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those no, ayes have it. So ordered. That takes us to the bottom of page 18S952. Senator from Cherokee, what purpose do you rise? And I'm going to move that we uh, carry over S952. Uh, Mr. President, members of the Senate, it's my intention to uh, present S-952 and S-956, the ARCA funding and the SRS funding, on Tuesday. So be prepared for that. Uh, staff is standing ready to answer any questions you might have between now and then. But, Mr. President, I ask that we carry the bills over and be prepared to take both bills up Tuesday. Motion is to carry over S-952. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. So ordered. Members, that takes us to the top of page 19, H4495. The reading clerk will read. The bill amending the code related to the designation of voting precincts in Lancaster County. Senator from York, what purpose? S Senator Johnson, what purpose do you rise? To explain the bill. You recognize to explain the bill. Mr. President, this is simply a renaming of precincts in Lancaster County. It's not moving any precincts. It's just renaming some of the existing precincts. Pending question is second reading. Roll call is required on the bill. The reading, the, the clerk will ring the bell. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Adams. Not voting, Mr. Alexander. Aye. Aye. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Bennett. Aye. Mr. Campson. Aye. Mr. Cash. Mr. Cash not voting. Mr. Clymer. Mr. Clymer votes aye. Mr. Corbin. Aye. Mr. Cromer. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mr. Fanning, aye. Mr. Gambrell has leave. Mr. Garrett, aye. Mr. Goldfinch, aye. Mr. Grooms, aye. Mrs. Gustafson, aye. Mr. Harputlian, 
Aye. Mr. Hembry? Aye. Mr. Hutto? Not voting, Mr. Jackson? Not voting, Mr. Kevin Johnson? Aye. Mr. Michael Johnson? Aye. Mr. Kimbrell? Not voting, Mr. Kimson? Aye. Mr. Loftus? Aye. Mr. Malloy? Not voting, Mr. Martin? Aye. Mr. Massey? Aye. Mrs. Matthews? Not voting, Mr. McElveen? Aye. Mr. McLeod? Aye. Mr. Peeler? Mr. Peeler votes aye. Mr. Rankin? Aye. Mr. Rice? Aye. Mr. Saab? Not voting, Mr. Scott? Votes aye. Mrs. Sin? Aye. Mr. Setzler? Aye. Mrs. Sheely? Aye. Mr. Stevens? Aye. Mr. Talley? Aye. Mr. Turner? Aye. Mr. Verdon? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Young? Mr. Young votes aye. Of all members vote, the Senator from Richland, what purpose? Unanimous consent for Senator Lee for Senator from Richmond, Senator Jackson. For Lee for today. Without objection. Senator Cash votes aye. Senator Adams votes aye. Senator Hutto votes aye. Senator McLeod votes aye. Oh, I'm sorry. Unanimous consent request. State your request. Lee for the Senator from Colleton. Without objection, Senator from Colleton has leave for the day. Other members needing to vote. Senator Kimbrell votes aye. Other members. The polls will close and the clerk will tabulate. <laughs> By a vote of 40 to 0, H44. 95 is given a second reading. That takes us. Senator from York. York, Senator Johnson, what purpose do you rise? I ask unanimous consent for third reading on H4495, the bill that we just passed unanimously tomorrow. Is the objection to third reading of 4495 on Friday, tomorrow? Hearing none, so ordered. That now takes us to S-956, and the senator from Cherokee renews his motion to carry over 956. All those in favor say aye. Those no. Ayes have it so ordered. Senator, that completes the uncontested calendar. There are now in the motion period to senator from Edgefield. What purpose do you rise? Move to dispense with the balance of the motion period. Motion is to dispense. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. So ordered. Senator from Berkeley, Senator Grooms, what purpose do you rise? Uh, personal interest. Point of personal interest up to five minutes. The senator is recognized. Senator, why he comes to the podium, the Senator from Marion, what purpose do you rise? Unanimous and, uh, consent request. State your request. Leave for the Senator for Darlington, Senator Malloy. Senator Malloy, without objection, for the day. Members of the Senate, it's a special day today as this has only happened four times since 1997 where my lovely wife, Carol Grooms, decided to spend um, an afternoon here with me in the South Carolina Senate. Um, there's only a few folks that are still in the chamber when she first uh, accompanied me here and there's many new faces and I did want to take this opportunity to let you know that my wife Carol is here. Uh, she keeps me between the guardrails, the love of my life and members of the Senate. It would be, um, I'd be grateful if you would help me welcoming my wife Carol to the South Carolina Senate. Thank you, Senator from Berkeley. Thank you. Senator from, Senator from Charleston, Senator Kimson, what purpose do you rise? Speak on a matter of personal interest. Recognize for a matter of personal interest up to five minutes and why he's coming to the, to the uh, podium. Senator from Lexington, Senator Sessler. Ask the Senator from Berkeley, Senator Grimsley, 
Mr. Yeah, Brown, I don't yes, know if you heard the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee comment. What uh, he said was she deserves an award. Yeah, a, a, a big reward, yes. <laughs> Body so notified. The senator from Charleston is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, members, I wanted to take just a brief moment to let you know something was on my heart. Uh, the good news is that I witnessed last night true bipartisanship and many people across the state remarked, wow, I'm not familiar with Republicans and Democrats working together in this sort of fashion on a controversial bill. Now, we began this uh, session about a month ago, and there is a bill that was sent to us, H3620, uh, I believe it is, or 3260, better known as the hate crimes bill. Now, while we have enjoyed bipartisanship and cooperation and collegial banter, I'm going to encourage my colleagues over the weekend to take a look at that bill. Bill, the hate crime bill that was passed by one of the most conservative House, House of Representatives in the nation uh, some last year, I believe. A bill that was endorsed by the South Carolina Chamber of Commerce and most of the Chamber of Commerce's around the state. This bill is 3260. I'm going to ask the senators whose names are on this bill. We'll start with the Senator of Spartanburg, York, Berkeley, Abbeville, Anderson, Lawrence, Pickens, and Greenville. And so I simply want to encourage those senators to take a look at the bill over the weekend, do a Google search, and you'll find that we, and I know this is, isn't always a persuasive argument, but you'll find that we're only, I believe it's only Wyoming that hadn't, hadn't passed a hate crime bill. I'm going to ask Mr. Leader to read the bill. I'm sure he's very familiar with it because he's a, he practices, I believe, some criminal law. And dig deep in your heart to let us have this debate. I can't guarantee any bill's passage. We, we, we spent three weeks on medical marijuana and I was quite impressed with the outcome of that debate. Didn't know how it was going to start, but last night we saw the Senate engage in deliberate debate and keep an open mind, more importantly. Uh, I would just simply say that I think that we need to do right by the state of South Carolina to comport with the rest of the nation that recognizes people are being singled out because of various uh, religion, creed, and various differences, and let us debate the hate crime bill. Now, we just spent 20 minutes on electric dump trucks. That's what I call it, electric dump trucks. If we can spend 30 minutes debating electric dump trucks, we can spend some time debating arguably one of the most dangerous crimes that occur in this state, and that's hate crime legislation. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator from Charleston. Senator from Clarendon. What I want to see if the Senator from Charleston would yield for a question. I yield. Senator, Senator yield. did you say uh, that other than South Carolina, the state of Wyoming is the only state that have not passed a hate crime bill, a hate crime legislation? I have not done the research myself, but that's what I'm being told. 
So you mentioned something a minute ago about maybe that's not a persuasive argument, but do you know that I think that, um, and I agree with you, let me say this, that um, the bill that we just spent three weeks on, uh, the medical marijuana bill, I think that was a great piece of bipartisan work, did you know? And I think that um, everybody had their say. I think both sides made some good points. I think this, the chief sponsor of the bill did an awesome job, as all of us agreed to. But did you know that I think one of the most compelling arguments on that piece of legislation is that there were some 36, 37, 38 states that had passed mar medical marijuana. So did you know that I might not agree with you that the fact that only two states have not passed a hate crime bill, I think that is pretty persuasive. And I, uh, did you know that as I sit here year after year and when, when people have bills that they want to uh, push forward, uh, one of the most common pieces of, of uh, well, one of the most common arguments, which I think is very persuasive, is the number of states that have passed similar legislation, uh, especially our neighbors, North Carolina, Georgia, and especially our states in the southeast region of the country. So did you know that I um, don't want to be the only state or one of, the only one of two states that have not passed uh, hate crime legislation? And I want to at least debate the bill, did you know? Because did you know that South Carolina is like other states across our country, and there are crimes that are being committed solely on the basis of hate? And I think it's important that you know we have this debate and see where it lands us. Thank you. As, thank you. Thank you. As the senator's time has expired, to recognize the senator, Sumter, for a question. For what purpose do you rise? I ask unanimous consent to give the senator two more minutes, so I might have a chance to ask him a couple of questions. Is there objection? Hearing none, for two additional minutes. If, if the senator will yield, Mr. President. Senator, I yield, yield for question. I yield. Senator, yield. Senator, and, and did you know at, at some point? I thought about taking a point of personal interest on this, this topic also, but this may be a more appropriate time to, to have some discussion with you if you're willing, Senator. I am. And, and did you know that, that you are correct? Um, I think at the beginning, well, sometime around the end of last year, three states did not have hate crime legislation on the books. It was obviously us and Wyoming, as you said, and the third was Arkansas. My understanding is that Arkansas has recently passed hate crime legislation, leaving us in Wyoming, just as you said, and Senator, you know, I, I want to make sure folks realize, did you also know that the way this bill came back from us, from the House, what it really does is provide prosecutors an additional tool to prosecute some very violent criminals. Is, is that not accurate? I think that is, and I don't practice criminal law, so I'm hoping that if the debate does uh, come to the floor and those senators who are currently blocking the bill, the nine senators I called out by name, um, if they'll allow us to have the debate, I'm looking for people who prosecute, who've, who are former prosecutors, we got at least one in here, and people who uh, defend uh, in the criminal law context, educate us on the efficacy of hate crime laws. Well, and did, you, did you know that I don't do a lot of criminal um, work right now, but in the course of my career, I've prosecuted and defended criminal cases. And did you also know my wife is currently a deputy solicitor over in Sumter County? I knew that. She's a career prosecutor. And, you know, one thing that you may not be aware of is that when this bill came back from the House, it only applies to right now as written to violent offenses that, that are defined in code as violent offenses, right? And you not only have to prove a criminal guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, but did you also know that you have to prove those, um, those elements that make it a hate crime beyond a reasonable doubt? It's the same standard. Were you aware of that? I was not aware. Uh, but I'm listening to you. So, so it gives prosecutors a tool, but Senator, what I really wanted to, to ask you about, and I don't want to spend too much time on this, but were you aware that recently we had a pretty bad incident that occurred in Sumter County? Um, I was aware. And I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about it because it's not, I don't think it's indicative of who we are in our county and our city. But long story short, did you know that um, basically a pretty bad racial epithet was written on what I would call a highway sign about a month ago? and it, it drew some very negative publicity. And I will say, did you know also that I spent some time on a Saturday night, it was during the ice storm, when our Secretary of Transportation, Christy Hall, was out there dealing with that. I talked to her directly, and she and our Chief of Police took very deliberate and quick steps to address this problem, apprehend a, a subject who I understand is a minor, and take care of the problem. But 
Um, Senator, did you know that this drew a lot of attention to this hate crime bill in my community? And I appreciate your leadership and uh, uh, Secretary Hall's leadership on that issue. I, I, I was aware of the facts by Facebook, but I see a lot of that kind of activity uh, in South Carolina, but also in neighboring states where racial tensions are high, uh, not just racial tensions, but uh, um, orientation tensions and even political tensions. And I know that one of the arguments against the bill has been, well, what else is next? Uh, but I think that the DOJ has released a report showing that hate crimes is at an all-time high. It started several years ago escalating. And that's indicative of many states, almost all of the states in the country addressing this very issue through legislation like this. And did you know that the way I understand it, the bill as written, as we have it on our calendar right now, would not have been applicable to that situation that happened in Sumter because I don't believe that would have been categorized as a violent crime according to statute, but it did draw attention to this in my community. And did you know I am extremely proud um, that our um, county administrator, Jim McCain, who's a Morehouse man like yourself, and our new mayor, who actually uh, replaced my father after a 20-year career, David Merchant, they wrote a joint letter to me with full-blown um, support of this bill, which I'm very proud of them for doing that. And if I can get a copy of that letter printed out, I will try to share it with you and the rest of the body today or maybe on Tuesday. Thank you, Senator. I appreciate you bringing this to the body's attention. Thank you, Senator. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Time has expired. That brings us to the bottom of page three, bills return from the House. Bills return from the House. S203, the reading clerk will read. Senator from Kershaw, what purpose do you have? Um, I move to carry over this bill. Okay. Motion is to carry over S203. Those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. So ordered. Carries us now on page four, S150, special order. The reading clerk will read. An act, the South Carolina Compassionate Care Act adds an article to the code to provide for the sale of medical cannabis products and the conditions under which a sale can occur. Pending question is third reading of the bill. Those in favor would say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. The bill is given third reading, S-150, on page number four. Senator from Edgefield, what purpose do you rise? Mr. President, we have a number of um, gubernatorial appointments that we need to consider, so I would move the Senate go into executive session. All in favor of going into executive session, please say aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. Sergeant, if you would, secure the chamber.
the Senate will please come to order. Senator from Edgefield, what purpose do you rise? Mr. President, I move we return to the box to read some appointments. Motion is returned to the box. Those in favor, aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. So ordered. The reading clerk will read. Senate is reported favorable on a statewide appointment member of the Commission on Higher Education at Large, Mr. Doug A. Schneider of Charleston. The question is confirmation. Roll call is required. Clerk will ring the bell. Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Adams, aye. Mr. Alexander, aye. aye. Mr. Allen, aye. Mr. Bennett, Mr. Bennett not voting. Mr. Bennett votes aye. Mr. Campson. Aye. Mr. Cash. Aye. Mr. Clymer. Aye. Mr. Corbin. Aye. Mr. Cromer. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mr. Fanning. Aye. Mr. Gamble has leave. Mr. Garrett. Mr. Garrett votes aye. Mr. Goldfinch. Aye. Mr. Grooms. Aye. Mrs. Gustafson. Aye. Mr. Harputlian. Aye. Mr. Hembry. Aye. Mr. Hutto. Not voting. Mr. Jackson has leave. Mr. Kevin Johnson. Aye. Mr. Michael Johnson. Aye. Mr. Kimbrell. Aye. Mr. Kimson. Aye. Mr. Loftus. Mr. Loftus. Not voting. Mr. Malloy has leave. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Massey. Aye. Mrs. Matthews has leave. Mr. McElveen. Aye. Ms. McLeod. Aye. Mr. Peeler. Aye. Mr. Rankin. Mr. Rankin not voting. Mr. Rice votes aye. Mr. Saab. Not voting. Mr. Scott. Aye. Mrs. Sin. Aye. Mr. Setzler. Aye. Mrs. Sheely. Aye. Mr. Stevens. Aye. Mr. Talley. Aye. Mr. Turner. Aye. Mr. Verdon. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mr. Young. Aye. Have all senators answered the roll? The senator from Rankin, Senator Rankin votes aye. Senator Loftus votes aye. Have all members answered the roll? Polls, polls are closed. Clerk, tabulate. By a vote of 39 to zero, the gentleman is confirmed. Senator from Richland, Senator Scott, what purpose do you rise? Unanimous consent to add this, this previous roll call to other, other confirmation. If there are any changes by any members, they can do uh, add it to the desk. So if somebody come in before we leave, they can also add their, their, their names to the roll call. Is there a senator from, is there Georgetown? What purpose do you rise? Just see if Senator Yield for a question. Senator Yield for a question. Senator Yield. We, Senator, would you consider adding abstentions that have already been noted to the desk in your unanimous consent? So moved. Unanimous consent requests with the addition of the abstentions. Is there objection to that unanimous consent request? Hearing none, so ordered. The clerk will read. Senate has reported favorable statewide appointment member of the State Athletic Commission from the 2nd Congressional District reappointment of Mr. Edwin M. Estridge of Chapin. The gentleman's individual is confirmed by a vote of 39 to 0. The clerk will read. Senate reported favorable member of the Residential Builders Commission at large, initial appointment of Mr. James Graves of Columbia. The individual is confirmed by a vote of 39 to 0. Clerk will read. Senate reported favorable member of the Jobs Economic Development Authority, 3rd Congressional District, Mr. Richard K. Blackwell of Seneca. The individual is confirmed by a vote of 39 to zero. The clerk will read. Senate reported favorable member of the Ports Authority, reappointment at large, 
Mr. Whitmar Seabrook Smith III of Charleston. The individual is confirmed by a vote of 39 to 0. The clerk will read. Senate reported favorable member of the Ports Authority reappointment at large, Mr. William H. Stern of Columbia. The individual is confirmed by a vote of 39 to 0. Senate reported favorable member of the Ports Authority reappointment at large, Ms. Pamela P. Lackey of Columbia. The individual is confirmed by a vote of 39 to 0. Senate reported favorable member of the Ports Authority reappointment at large, Mr. Willie E. Jeffries of Ellery. The individual is confirmed by a vote of 39 to 0. Senate reported favorable member of the Ports Authority initial appointment at large, Ms. Felicia Rue Howard of Columbia. The individual is confirmed by a vote of 39 to 0. Senate reported favorable member of the Ports Authority reappointment at large, Mr. Kirk D. Grindstaff of Hilton Head. The individual is confirmed by a vote of 39 to 0. Senate reported favorable member of the Ports Authority initial appointment at large, Mr. William A. Coates of Greenville. The individual is confirmed by a vote of 39 to 0. Senate reported favorable member of the Ports Authority reappointment at large, Mr. Mark W. Bike Jr. of Florence. The individual is confirmed by a vote of 39 to 0. Senate reported favorable member of the Par Department of Health and Environmental Control at large chairman, Mr. John Robert Bolches, Vice Mark Elam. The individual is confirmed. The individual is confirmed. The senator from Odessa. The desk is clear. The senator from Edgefield, what purpose do you rise? Mr. President, I think we've gotten to a good time to break for the week, so I want to see if anybody has a unanimous consent request before we do that. Any unanimous consent request? Mr. President? Senator from Edgefield is recognized. I move the Senate do now adjourn. Motion is that the Senate do now adjourn. Those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. The Senate stands adjourned until noon on Tuesday.